Uh, so seriously, like how many more of these movies are they going to make? My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for The Predator. I really do appreciate it. So I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, when I first saw the trailer for this movie a uh, number of months ago, you can uh, go check out my reaction. I was not too impressed with the trailer. I was kind of saying to myself, oh, you know, I like the last Predator movie, Predators movie that came out in 2010 with Adrian Brody, but it wasn't all that. But, you know, it seems kind of early for them to be doing another Predator movie. And then you had like the little boy with the spaceship in his room and that's what was bringing the ship. I just really wasn't feeling it at all. And the second trailer came out, I'm just like, okay, this movie is going to just come and pass me by. But that third and last final Red Band trailer they released a number of weeks ago, that's what really got me hype about this movie. And then when I started paying more attention to it, realizing that Shane Black directed it. Shane Black also starred in the original Predators movie that was in 1987 with Arnold Schwarzenegger. But yeah, Shane Black, he did Kiss Kiss Get Bang Bang. Uh, he is the writer and director of this franchise. Uh, he also did Iron Man 3, which I have right here, uh, which I was a little bit disappointed about. But uh, Shane Black is a great director. Uh, in my opinion, he's also a great actor. And uh, like I said, this is uh, this is not a remake or a reboot. This is a sequel to all of the Predators films, even the one in 2010 with Adrian Brody, uh, which I have right here. Um, as far as my knowledge of the Predators, I've seen the first one that came out in 87. I do. I don't think I've seen the second one. I think Donald Glover or Danny, not Donald, Danny Glover is in that one. I think, and I, I haven't seen. It. I could have looked it up, but of course I've seen Predators right here, uh, and the, which came out in 2010, and then this one follows up. So this is a sequel to all of those. This is all still in the same uh, universe. And of course, at the end of this review, I'm going to talk about you know where this the Predators movie stands with all the rest. But one of the first things that I do want to talk about is the cast. That is one of the things that I really did love about this movie. The the cast from beginning to end, top to bottom, left and right, and all in between is fantastic. Uh, you know, all the men are great, all the women are great, and the children are great too. First ch uh, child I want to talk to is really the only child is Jacob Tremblay. Uh, he, I don't even, I don't want to call him a lead. Uh, well, he's not the lead actor in this film. But he is one of the main cast members, and I really did like him. You know, he had um, he, he he was autistic, and you know, some people kind of look at that as a disorder, while other people look at that as like, no, you're like the next genius, you're like the next level of human evolution. And I really do like how the film kind of used that to kind of tell the story in this movie. Um, another actor that I really do like in this film is uh, we got Thomas Jane in here. Uh, he was the Predator. We have Olivia Munn. She was uh, Psylocke in X-Men uh, Apocalypse, which came out a couple of years ago. I was disappointed about that. Sterling K. Brown is in this from Black Panther. And uh, uh, he was also in Hotel Artemis earlier this year. You know, it took me a while to get on board with his character because he was just so arrogant and cocky. But at the same time, like about the midpoint of the film, I kind of was just like, you know, even though this is possibly not a guy that I would hang out with and just kind of like, just like, dude, shut the hell up. You know what I'm saying? I still liked him. He was a likable a-hole. He was a likable asshole. And that's just kind of weird to me, you know, how somebody can just be portrayed like that, but I just still liked them. Um, that just goes to the great writing in this movie. Uh, another great cast member is Keegan-Michael Key. When I saw the trailers for this movie, I was just like, dude, like, I, I just could tell that he was going to annoy me, and he's just like, oh, this guy's crazier than all of us. Yuck, 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 yuck. Just, just, I thought it was going to be over the top, but no. It, he, his character really did fit well uh, within the movie. I liked him a lot. And also somebody I want to mention is Trevante Rose. He played a character by the name of Nebraska Williams. And um, he was in Moonlight as well. And I, I really did, I, I really did like him. Now, and I'm talking about how I'm liking the characters. A number of them. Th there was a, a Boyd uh, Holbrook who played the the main lead. I guess you can say uh, his name in the film was Quinn McKenna. He is really the only person that I liked at the very beginning of the film. Everybody else that I kind of just named, besides Olivia Munn, because I liked her too at the very beginning too. Everybody else kind of had to grow on me. They really didn't seem like they were actually playing real roles. They actually felt like they were in a movie playing a role. Like you know, hello, I am acting and I'm reading my lines right here and. 
that's just the script. So, daka, daka, daka. you know, that's just kind of like what it seemed like to me. It just wasn't flowing or whatever. But as I got more into the film, you know, I was just like, you know, I really do like this group of guys. Um, you know, they're great and they're fun. And the, the film is fun. It is a film that you don't need to take seriously. I don't even think that was the aim of the director when he was writing the script, which is funny because um, he when he directed... Uh, Iron Man 3, which I, I don't know why every time I say the movie, I got to pull it out. But when he directed Iron Man 3, which was successful and made, what, $1.2 billion, he said that 20th Century Fox approached him and was like, hey, man, we really like what you did with Iron Man 3. We want to give you the same budget that Iron Man 3 and apply that to the Predators. As a matter of fact, let me try to look up the budget for this film real quick. While I, while I was uh, trying to prepare for this review, I knew that there was something uh, that I was forgetting um, but I just want to look it up real quick because I think uh, it's very important for what I'm having to say right now. What? You got to be. Okay. Yeah. I'm. They showed the budget for the 1987 movie. Okay. I'm like, this is no, there ain't no way in hell this movie was this cheap. Okay. So let me, $18 million. Uh, let's see what the production budget. Okay. Well, I don't know. It's not there. Let me just check one more spot real quick, guys. Y'all don't mind uh being patient with me real quick because um uh, it's just that important and if i can't find it you know i'll talk about it some other time okay here we go the predator i'm at the numbers.com why do i got so many dang advertisements popping up okay and they don't got no type of information at all uh but that's okay so they came to him and was like hey man we want to give you this money you know what i'm saying we like what you did with iron man 3 and he was like okay cool i'm down you know what i'm saying and i can't i cannot blame him for that so when he was talking to 20th century fox he was like look i don't want no pg-13 movie i want the film to be r-rated just like the first film and the first film was r-rated and so you know that's just a great thing and he was also talking about how he hates when the films have to water it down kind of like he was watching the grudge in 2004 which is a uh, knockoff or remake of the uh juno or uh, i don't know the japanese name for it over there it's very scary but over here we have to water things down and no he did not hold any punches this is a very violent movie people do get their heads blown off and scores ripped out and spines and shot in the feet with bullets and grenades and plasma weapons and tranquilizers and nets and one of the people in there had like a little spear with i ain't, I ain't gonna say that because i don't want to spoil it for you but the weapons in this thing were vast and they were badass that's all you need to know going in because you're gonna have you a good old time so uh something else i want to what i really do like about the film is it just really didn't waste any time because we already know what predator is we've seen predator one two and predators and alien versus predator and things like that so it's not like you know when they land or you come into a contact with the alien it's like oh my gosh this proves that we're not the only ones in the universe you know no no no, no. We, we already got uh, bases and establishments and corridors over here, and they already know what the deal is. And as soon as they touch down, it's going down. And that's just great right there because this film is only one hour and about 47 minutes. And another thing that's significant about that is that holds a tradition of all the Predator films of how they all are around like 147 minutes. But I think that Predator 2, when I was looking on some information, is like the only film that made it over like one hour and 48 minutes. But anyway, I just said all that to say, usually, you know, like the shortest film is about like 90 minutes, you know, 100, an hour and a half. But this is like 15, 17 minutes longer. And they were able to uh, squeeze a lot of, uh, of material in that short period of time. Because the film has a lot of different territories, you know what I'm saying? And I'm kind of just saying this right now, here at this point that I wanted to say at the end, but I really can't help myself, is, is that I was so satisfied with what I was seeing in this movie that I didn't even need to see a grand finale. I didn't even need to see a third act, you know what I'm saying? And the only other film that I can think of at the top of my head that done anything like that was Man of Steel. Uh, because I still feel that Man of Steel, not the best comic book movie ever, not the, my most favorite, but it's still has some of the best action period that that's fight at the end with general zod, general zod and all the other kryptonians that that's man that was just that's top notch for me right there and in that movie i was like oh no before they went to space i was like shit you know what i'm saying i've had enough you know what i'm saying i'm a comic book ahead you know what i'm saying 
And then when they was doing all that in that movie, man, still it was like, okay, this is a whole bunch more. But like in the the second act or whatever, with all the action, I was satisfied. And there another great just about the story and the way this is written with the plot. I had no idea how this thing was going to end. And you had so many different groups and factions, like this group of people over here and these group of people over here. But then you got this predator right here in the trailer. Then you got the A4 predators looking like he coming out of a page of David and Goliath, but predator style. You know, I'm just like you. You like who is on whose team who's the good guy who's the bad guy i mean you have a good sense of that but at the same time it's just like we're not whoa i just don't know what to expect i don't know who is supposed to be teaming up with who and like the thing about it is all the characters in this movie are smart ain't nobody dumb you know what i'm saying i just got done complaining about the nun that came out uh last week and how you just, it would just stu- the character's name if it, uh, go to the filmography at the nun on imdb you're gonna look at the real actor's name and next to him it's gonna say stupid character one stupid Stupid character two, stupid character three. That's not the case with this film right here. Damn the damn little boy, the, the little boy that's supposed to be uh annoying. The you know kids are always annoying. Getting oh the monster gonna get me or stopping in the middle of the street with deer in the head. Like no, he the one, the smartest dude, the super autistic guy. I mean everybody, even the crazy people were uh, fun, uh I'm finna say funny, and they were. Everybody was smart in this movie, and I like how they think together. And you got this ragtag group of people that are crazy. They can fight their ass off. It's like they've been t- teaming up together for like the longest. You know what I'm saying? Like some super power ranger, uh, army rangers or something like for real. Like, and it was like it was authentic. Like I believed it. I was like, okay. It's just it's just great writing in this story. I mean, they shit. He just did a great job because you got this group of people that. Or they don't know each other, but they just have, like, they just on code, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just, you know when you know, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you know what I'm saying? You know how we do, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can just kind of just look at somebody and give them, like, a little nod. And we, didn't, we didn't, you know, look, like a little wink and a little head nod come in, like, 76 different words, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. And this is how they was in this movie, like, when they was fighting the Predators. I'm just like, dang, <laughs> like... Like, can you already tell I'm going to buy this movie and I really did like it a lot? Okay, let me, uh, let, let's see. Here. Now, another great thing about it, I got a whole little thing of notes, uh, right here. Another great thing I like is just the environment, right? Because the first film, you in the middle of nowhere, the jungle, wherever you you were out there, and that's that's cool and nice with the scenery. And then with the other Predator film, right here, you in the jungle too. Now, and Predator 2, from what I remember, I think they were in the city. I, I got to go back and watch it. I heard it was whack. But this right here is not in the jungle. It's not in the city. It's in a suburban area. You know what I'm saying? So that's just this kind of like a different perspective that you just wouldn't think. You know, you in the jungle, you hiding around. They got camouflage, but no, this is in like a suburban area. So that just creates another great experience. Just seeing like a predator from out of space, you know, running around, jumping on houses and swim pools and uh, things like that. So what what else we got here? It didn't waste no time. The environment, love. I'm not in. Uh, I'm never knowing what to expect. The movie was funny as hell. Like it was like one of the hardest things in the movie to me is combining serious moments and comedy. You know, uh, Marvel has I, I like Marvel comic films uh, a lot. Uh, they they it, it's kind of hit or miss with them. You know, sometimes like what what I'm trying to say. Okay, you seen um you seen Iron no you seen Avengers that came out in 2012. Remember when the Hulk and Thor were on the uh, on the the Leviathan monster thing, and they 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 knocked it out or whatever, and then they landed in in somewhere in New York, and they were just kind of sitting there like, yeah, we just whooped some ass, and then Hulk punched Thor, and he flew over like that. Serious moment, but funny, but it worked. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that uh, that I I go give another example of how that doesn't work, but I feel like I'm kind of taking too long. But in this film here, there are some serious moments and comedic moments uh, uh, melded in together that just works very, very well. And the movie is funny. It's like, you know, Shane, like, I can just kind of tell. It's like, they're probably like, okay, Shane, we want to do this and we want to do that. What do you think? He's like, guys, 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 no. He throwing the paper in the face like, I'm just trying to have some fun. Like, you know, we can have a little serious tone too, but no, this is this movie for real. This is kind of like a uh, a cowboy bebop, rah, 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 you know, go save the day da, 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 type of movie. And that's cool. And the, the film even makes fun of itself because, you know, when somebody's always trying to give some type of motivational speech and we have to fight because we have to win and we're not going to bend over, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, you know, they're trying to do that in the, 
this movie and I'm not going to say what happened, but it was funny. You know what I'm saying? And I laughed. So that is that. Now, um, I talk, did I talk about the action? The action was great. I don't even think I talked about the action. And that's probably the main thing that you want to go see. And I'm, I mean, I really did like the characters. Also, they would have some touching moments between a father and a son and also between some two crazy people because you actually cared about them. It was a King of Michael Key and this other guy with Tourette's. Oh, and the reason why Shane Black wrote the character with Tourette's is because Shane Black has Tourette and Tourette's syndrome in real life. I didn't even know that. So just kind of fascinated, you know, kind of how, well, I, don't, I was about to say a curse, but excuse me, that is disrespectful. It's not a curse. I don't, I don't walk that life. So I, I don't know. You're beautiful how you was born. I think you get what I'm trying to say. But anyway, the character interactions, it wasn't just them bouncing off of each other. The, the, the film actually took time, a, a few moments to slow down and, uh, you know, kind of let you just kind of you know, let you get to know these characters, even though they're bickering and fighting deep down, they really do love each other. You know what I'm saying? And that was deep to me and very surprising in a predator film like this. Uh, the people that died, a lot of people went out like a G, you know what I'm saying? It was like, Hey, you know, if I'm dying, I'm taking somebody with me, you know, and I'm, I'm down for stuff like that. But let, let's see what else we got. Um, yeah, I, I, I talked about pretty much um, everything, guys. I mean, this was just a great tone. This is something that I, I am really going to be buying on 4K. I didn't even say Blu-ray. I'm going to be buying this on 4K. My only gripe is this. My only gripe is this. Now, towards the end of the film, when they kind of revealed, when the, the, the plot and the story fully revealed itself, yeah, fully revealed itself, I kind of think I sensed a little plot hole. I was like, okay, I like where you was going with this, but if this was your objective the whole time, why did you go and waste these other people over here? You know what I'm saying? And I may have even said too much. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but the movie is freaking fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Um, it is better than this movie right here, Predators. It is better than this. I, I will give you that. I'm just going to go ahead and say it's better than the 1990s version as well. Uh, even though I haven't seen it, man, that may not be fair. So I'm kind of just joking around. Is it better than the first one, 1987? I don't know. I have to go back and watch that one. Um, and yeah, I, I was about to say that this movie was so good that it's making me want to go buy the previous three on 4k, but I don't think I want to do that, but I definitely do want to see this movie again. Uh, and th this film leaves room for more sequels too. You know, it, it really does. And I would be highly disappointed. I got to find the budget for this thing. But I would be highly disappointed if it does not make bank at the box office. Because it really just does, it does deserve it. And this is smart, too, because this could have been a summer release. Uh, but it wasn't. And it is right at the beginning of the fall. Man, what is the budget for this movie? I want to know. Um, if you know the budget for this film, please let me know what, it, maybe, maybe it is, uh, maybe it's on this page and it is not. Well, that's unfortunate. Let me see if this thing is on uh, Rotten Tomatoes real quick. I'm just curious. This, this review going long. Oh, hell no. I don't know. Well, they, they tripping on, on how many people reviewed this thing. We got 30 reviews, 15 liked it, 15 didn't. Well, hey, I'm one of the people that liked it, guys. If I had to rate the Predator out of a 1 out of 10, damn, I would give it a 9 out of 10. The only thing is I really want to, no, hold on, because I think I've been grading kind of easy lately as well, to be honest with you. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because when I'm thinking about that plot hole, it's not a big plot hole, but it's just kind of, I don't know. But I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10, confidently giving this film a 9 out of 10. But guys, I, I said all that before. In the end, 
Th you know, this is just my opinion, okay? What did you think? Have you seen The Predator yet? Or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all the good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning into my opinion slash review for the predator starring a whole bunch of people that i like written directed by shane black and before was it written directed by shane black my bad i'm up here messing up my intro my outro I, I, I gotta get the credit right i know it was directed by him was it written by him too yeah written directed by shane black and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace